Uh, six, so uh, we've got a formula with V um, equals 3B plus 2B squared. And we're given that B equals minus 4. Find out the value of V. So we'll do the first bit. 3B, so that means 3 times minus 4. So 3 lots of minus 4 is minus 12. And we've got the 2B squared. Well, that means 2, and if I put a minus 4 in here, squared. Now, big mass tells us we've got to do the squared bit first. So we've got minus 4 times minus 4. Minus times minus gives you a plus, so we've got 16, and then we've doubled it, because it's times by 2 there, so that gives us 32. So we now have minus 12, add 32, because we're adding the two terms together, and that will then give us 20. B, simplifying this, the indices laws, when you're timesing, you add the little powers. So that'll be m to the 13. A known one you need to know is anything to the naught, uh, anything at all to the power of naught, will give you 1. So y to the naught, 7 to the naught, whatever, is 1. The only difference is when you have something like 7x to the naught, x to the naught is still 1, then you go times it by 7. So just be careful if you chuck that one in there. And then part D, simplify the following. Now, to the power of a half means that we've got the half will come out of the 16. Now, a power of a half means square root. So we've got the square root of 16, which is 4. And then we've got, because it's brackets, it means times. So we've got the two little numbers times together, 6 times a half, or 6 a halves are 3. So we've got 4 in front, and then y to the 3. Question 7. Guy wants to find out how much time people spend watching television. He will design a questionnaire. Write a suitable question for Gary's questionnaire. Right. So, I myself like putting down um, to the nearest hour just so the response box is easier. So, um, how much time people spend watching television? So, how long do you spend? watching TV now you need to put a time scale so in a month in a day in a week how much time do you spend watching TV in a day question mark give your answer to the nearest hour all right something like that because then you can just say first response box, so that's one mark um, because you've got to put a time frame and you can't just say how long do you spend watching TV because the person who's been asked the question won't know if it's in a day in a month so it would change their responses uh, one to two hours three to four hours and then five plus therefore response box is giving you the more, the more. Um, don't put overlapping boxes so don't put one to three then three to five because three's and then in both Question 8. Got a student canteen offers four different meal choices. Can choose salad, pizza, meat pie, or fish. Uh, shows the probability they'll select them. Shows not random um, using the, to be used to canteen. What's the probability to choose meat pie or fish? So, 8 part 1. Or means add. So, we've got meat pie, which is 0 0.23, added to fish because it's a combined chance of picking either of them which will then give you 0 0.39 part 2 uh, chooses pizza well the chance of them all added up together will be 1 because they're all the possible choices so if we add the 3 which we know I can just add 0 0.2 to 0 0.39 so I've added these before so that gives you 0 0.59 take that away from 1 that will then give you 0 0.41 so the probability there will be 0 0.41 that it's pizza, therefore that being the most popular choice. Question 9. We've got Janice asked 100 students if they like biology, chemistry or physics. And then we've also got facts about boys and girls within that. So personally, um, on these sort of questions where you've got clear groupings, I draw a table. Now, my table will not be drawn with a ruler, but I'd like you to do so. 
to get it standards up. So I'm going to go across here with boys and girls. So I'm going to do boys here and girls. I just find this easier than to go through the question. So boys and girls there, and then we've got three subject types. Now I always have an extra column for the total on each part. And uh, we've got biology, chemistry, or physics. So we've just got biology, chem, or physics. We know 100 people are asked in total here. Um, so going through, 38 students are girls. So girls along the total here is 38. Um, 21 of the girls like biology best. So biology girls, 21. 18 boys like physics best. 7 out of the 23 students who like chemistry best are girls. So 7 out of the 23 who like chemistry are girls. Um, work out the number of students who like biology best. So we're looking for this number here. I'll just change my colour and we'll just go through the steps. So you know 38 girls, if there's 100 in total, there must be 62 boys then to add that up to 100. If 7 girls pick chemistry, then work out the difference from 23. Um, which will then give you 16, so 16 boys must like chemistry. And along here now, or here, well that's 28, that's got to be 10 then, to add up along here, to give you 38, go downwards, that gives you 28 there. And then we're adding across, um, 16 and 18 is 20, 34, so we're going to add to 34 to get to 62, 28. We we'll then go down, and that will then give you 49. The great thing about this is then you can check by going across. Now 20, 20 and 40 is 80. 8 and 9 is 17 and 3 is 20. So 80 and 20 gives you 100. So you know, I just write 49 underneath, you know that's how many like biology. And then we've got question 10. Uh, quite a long-winded one. This thing a lot of writing to sort of get our heads around. So see how I pull this question to bits as I'm doing it. Uh, Mrs. Miller is planning a party for 70 children. Just my little notes, really. Uh, she'll give each child a party bag to take home. She'll put a hat and a toy in each party bag. So we've got a party bag, so PB, and within that we're getting a hat and a toy. Um, party bags are sold in 12s, hats are sold in 8s, and toys are sold in 9s. Mrs. Miller buys the smallest possible number of bags for hats, toys and bags. Mrs. Miller can fill more party bags than she needs. How many more? So what we've got here um, is there's not going to be any party bags left over. So we've got to work out um, in each one of these here then which one um, to give us above 70, first of all. So we've got 70 children. So we're going up in the 12 times table, the 8 times table, the 9 until we get a number that lands in them all. So then she's not got any left over. So if we go in the 12s, seventy two eighty four. go up in the 8s for a bit. And go up in the nines. So you need to know your times tables very well for this question. I've just done the sort of first few twelve and so on. And then what we're looking is we are scouring to find um, the number, the lowest common multiple of these numbers that's above seventy. So we go down the eights and we realise that seventy two here is what we're after, so we'll buy 72 party bags, 72 hats and 72 toys. That would then give us enough for two more, as was required. 